Hello, in, th in this video, we're going to go over problem four from the 2024 University of Maryland High School Math Competition Part 2. Um, first of all, I suggest that you spend some time working on this problem because this is, a, this is not an easy problem. In fact, there's only a single student in our competition that was able to solve this problem, although given the uh, time limitation. So here's the problem. For every positive integers, we want to prove this inequality, that the product of 1, 3, all the way to 2n minus 1, divided by 2 times 4, all the way to 2n, is less than 1 over root 3n. Um, so most of the students that tried this problem tried using induction, which seems to be a natural approach to this. So let's try induction and then see what happens. So first of all, we have the basis step. The basis step is easy to check. So basis step is 1 over 2 is less than 1 over root 3, which is clearly true because 2 is more than root 3. Now, what about the inductive step? For the inductive step, we're going to have to assume this inequality for n. So we have 1, 3, all the way to 2n minus 1 over 2, 4, all the way to 2n is less than 1 over root 3n and we want to prove the next one which is 1 all the way to 2n plus 1 the product of odd numbers from 1 to 2n plus 1 divided by the product of even numbers from 2 to 2n plus 2 and we want to show this is less than 1 over root 3 parentheses n plus 1 what we know is we know that the first portion is less than 1 over root 3n and the second portion we're just going to keep that and this is 2 I'm going to factor a 2 from the bottom uh, last term in the denominator and we want to see if this is less than 1 over root 3 times n plus 1 so this is the question mark this is what we want to do if this is if this inequality holds then we are done with the problem first of all the root 3 cancels second we can simplify the left side by cancelling this uh, root n plus 1 from the two sides and we're going to get root n we have a 2 and we get root n plus 1 that is less than 1. So the question is is this inequality valid or not this is the same as saying 2n plus 1 squared so I'm going to clear the denominator and I'm going to score both sides is less than 4n times n plus 1 which is the same as saying 4n squared plus 4n plus 1 is less than 4n squared plus 4n, which is clearly not true. Okay, so this inequality cannot be proved using induction. Now, there are a couple of different approaches that we can take. Sometimes when the inequality or any type of uh, induction um, argument doesn't work, it is because what we are trying to prove is in fact too weak rather than too strong. So this is quite interesting. So what does that mean? If you can make this inequality stronger so that you have a stronger inductive hypothesis, then you can actually prove that using induction. So how do we deal with that? If you experiment this for if the first few terms, you'll see that you can actually strengthen this inequality and change this uh, the right side from 1 over root 3n to 1 over root 3 uh, n plus 1. So instead of proving this, we are going to claim a stronger inequality. So we claim this inequality. 1, 3, all the way to 2n minus 1 over 2, 4, all the way to 2n is less than or equal to 1 over root 3n plus 1. And if we prove this inequality, then of course we know this is less than 1 over root 3n and that completes the proof. So we only need to prove the inequality on the left. But this is going to be easier to prove. So how do we prove this one by induction? Well, we'll check the basis step. I won't go over all the algebra. Uh, we get 1 over 2 is less than 1 over root 3 plus 1. Uh, although this has to be less than or equal to only for the basis step. And what we see is that this inequality, in fact, does hold. Now, if you look at the inductive step, the inductive step is we assume 1, 3, all the way to 2n minus 1 over 2, 4, all the way to 2n is less than or equal to 1 over root 3n plus 1. And we want to prove the next one. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply both sides by 2n plus 1 
over 2n plus 2. And if we do, this becomes less than or equal to 2n plus 1 divided by 2n plus 2 times root 3n plus 1. And now the question is, is this going to be less than or, or equal to the next term, which is 1 over root 3 times n plus 1 plus 1. And what we're going to have to do is now score both sides, cross multiply, and see what we get. So if you score both sides, we get 2n plus 1, uh, 2, 2 n plus 1 squared times 3n plus 4. I'm cross multiplying and scoring both sides. It is less than or equal to 2n plus 2 squared times 3n plus 1. So simply from here, expand both sides and compare the two sides, and you will see that this inequality in fact does hold. But I won't go over the details of this computation. So this is the first method um, that in fact uh, exactly one student provided this solution. Now here is the second solution. So the second solution involves a very clever idea that was um, in fact came from a kind of a half solution that was proposed by a student, but they couldn't completely solve this uh, problem. So here's the idea. If you look at the in initial uh, approach that we had, um, somehow the inequality kind of got reversed. We were going from n to n plus 1, and this inequality, instead of becoming uh, 2n plus 1 all squared, less than, um, greater than 4n, parentheses n plus 1, which is exactly this, it became more. So the inequality is kind of reversed, which suggests that we should be able to go from n to n minus 1, or from n plus 1 to n. So here's the claim that we're going to make. If the inequality holds for n plus 1, then it holds for n. Okay, so now why is this going to be useful? If we can prove this inequality is true for large values of n, then we can kind of do an, a backwards induction. Now first let's um, prove this claim. So if the inequality holds for n plus 1, which means we have the product of odd numbers from 1 to 2n plus 1 divided by the product of even numbers from 2 to 2n plus 2, we know this is less than 1 over root 3 times n plus 1. Then we're going to prove that this in fact inequality, this inequality is in fact true for n. So we're going to keep what we need for n, which is exactly this. And we are going to um, multiply both sides by 2 times n plus 1, divide both sides by 2n plus 1, and then we have root 3 times n plus 1. Let's simplify this. We get 2 root n plus 1 divided by 2n plus 1 uh, times root 3. So what I did is uh, I, I created the term for n, and I'm going to show that this is in fact less than or equal to 1 over root 3n. So if we show this one, then the claim is in fact valid. Although it's not quite clear yet why this uh, claim is going to be useful, um, now let's cross multiply and square. We get 4 times n times n plus 1 is less than or equal to 2n plus 1 squared, which is the same as saying 4n squared plus 4n is less than or equal to 4n squared plus 4n plus 1. So it is valid. So if we prove this inequality for n plus 1, we can also prove it for n. Now, if we can prove the inequality for large values of n, then we are going to be done. Now, let's look at the inequality, and let's look at the left side of the inequality. So we have the left side is 1, 3, all the way to 2n minus 1, divided by 2, 4, all the way to 2n. And we want to show this is less than 1 over root 3n. Well, let's write these in terms of factorials, and we know that we can understand uh, asymptotically the behavior of factorials. And that's how we can prove this one for large values of n. In terms of uh, factorials, we can write down the numerator by um, uh, as, a, as 2n factorial if we multiply the numerator and denominator by product of even numbers. So the left side is 2n factorial divided by 2, 4, all the way to 2n all squared. And what I did here was I multiplied both numerator and denominator by 2, 4, all the way to 2n. And I'm also going to multiply by root n, and I want to show this is less than 1 over root 3. 
So here is what we're going to do. We're going to approximate factorials using what we call the Sterling's approximation. But instead of uh, jumping to that, I'm going to first kind of simplify this, write it down in terms of factorials. The denominator is the product of even numbers. So I can write it down as product of 2 times 1, 2 times 2, 2 times 3, all the way to 2 times n. So there are n 2s at the bottom. So I get 2 to the n, and I have n factorial, all of that squared. So now, what is the Sterling approximation? So Sterling approximation tells us this. It tells us an approximation for n factorial. It basically tells us that if I take n factorial and I let n go to infinity, for large values of n, this is approximately e to the negative n, n to the n, uh, times root 2 pi n. So this is the Sterling approximation. And this limit is equal to 1. So asymptotically, n factorial and this expression are the same, which means if I take this expression, I can approximate it for large values using this um, uh, expression, so using this uh, denominator. So in other words, um, I can say 2n factorial root n divided by 2 to the n times n factorial squared is approximately, I'm going to replace uh, n by 2n, so get, to get an approximation for 2n factorial, I would get e to the negative 2n, 2n to the power of 2n, root 2 pi times 2n, uh, and then I have a root n here, and then 2 to the n times uh, uh, squared, which is 2 to the 2n, and then n factorial, which is e to the negative 2n, n to the 2n, 2 pi n, uh, that's n factorial uh, squared, I believe. So e to the negative 2n, n to the power of 2n, and then 2 pi n. So that's the denominator. Which means, um, I'm going to simplify this, so I have e to the negative 2n, that simplifies here, then I have 2 to the 2n that simplifies here, I have n to the 2n that simplifies here, I have um, root n and root n that simplifies with n, and I also have a uh, root 2 uh, and root 2, another root 2 here, so that simplifies with 2. So all in all, I get 1 over root pi. So what does this mean? It means if I take the limit, based on the ascending approximation, if I take the limit of 1, 3, all the way to 2n minus 1 over the product of 2, 4, all the way to 2n, and I multiply that by root n as n goes to infinity, I get 1 over root pi. But notice that this quantity is less than 1 over root 3. So what does it mean? It means for large values of n, so there is some capital N, such that if n is greater than that capital N, then this expression 1, 3, all the way to 2n minus 1 over 2 times 4 all the way to 2n times root n becomes less than 1 over root 3 because this uh, sequence gets close to 1 over root pi which is less than 1 over root 3 which means it's going to be less than 1 over root 3, which means for large values of n, we have the inequality, and because of that idea of backwards induction, the inequality is going to hold for every value of n. So this is the second solution that was motivated by one of the uh, solutions uh, suggested by, by one of the students, but it was kind of a half solution. So here is now a third solution that I had in mind, but nobody really came uh, close to this solution. This solution is uh, a little bit shorter, but uh, it does have some computation. So here's the idea. We're going to, so this is solution number three. And here's what we're going to do. We are going to first square both sides. So we get one, three, all the way to 2n minus one, divided by two times four, all the way to 2n. All of that squared is less than 1 over 3n. So this is the inequality that we want to prove. Now we're going to notice that product of two consecutive odd numbers is a uh, is 1 less than a perfect square. So we're going to rewrite the left side as 1 times 3, then 3 times 5, 
then 5 times 7 all the way to 2n minus 3 times 2n minus 1 and then I have also a 2n minus 1 at the end. And then all of that divided by, so the first one is 2 squared, 4 squared, uh, 6 squared, uh, all the way to 2n minus 2 squared, and then I have a 2n squared at the end. So I have um, these on the left side, and then I have 1 over 3n on the right side. This is what, what I want to show. Now, let's examine these expressions. These expressions, 1 times 3 is 2 squared minus 1, because all of these are 2k minus 1 times 2k plus 1, which are 2k squared minus 1. So we can write this down as 2 squared minus 1, 4 squared minus 1, all the way to 2n minus 2 squared minus 1, divided by 2 squared, 4 squared, all the way to 2n minus 2 squared, and I'm also left with 2n minus 1 over 2n squared. Here's what we're going to do now. We notice that each of these fractions are going to be less than 1. So we can replace them all by 1, and we would get this is less than 2n minus 1 over 4n squared, which is less than 2n over 4n squared, which is 1 over 2n. Unfortunately, this doesn't quite work because we get 1 over 2n rather than 1 over 3n. And here is the computation part that comes into place. It, it has a bit of computation, um, but it is possible to do. It's not like impossible. It does have some computation. Um, it gets a little bit nasty, but it's, it, it's still like manageable. Now, if you, uh, the idea is this. The idea is that you need a factor of two-thirds to get from 1 over 2n to 1 over 3n. So what we're going to do is we're going to evaluate the first few terms in hope that we get the factor of two-thirds, and then the rest of it follows from the same idea. If you look at 1, one squared, 3 squared, 5 squared, 7 squared, 9 squared, times 11 divided by 2 squared, 4 squared, 6 squared, 8 squared, and 10 squared. This is going to be less than 2 thirds. So again, this requires some computation. It's not like uh, obvious. It does have to do, you do have to do the computation. Um, so this is less than, uh, less than 2 thirds, which means I can implement the same idea for the rest of it. So I can write it down as 1 squared, 3 squared, all the way to 11, divided by 2 squared, all the way to 10 squared, and then 11 times 13, etc., 2n minus 3 times 2n minus 1, and then times 2n minus 1 over 4n squared. And at the bottom, of course, we have all those uh, perfect scores of, uh, of even numbers. Now, each one of these fractions that we had here, each of these like fractions here, are less than 1. So this whole thing is less than 1. This thing is less than 2 thirds. So this becomes less than 2 thirds times 2n over 4n squared, which is in fact 1 over 3n. Um, and that completes the proofs. So this is a kind of a creative solution, but it does require some computation. So this brings me to the end of this video. I will see you in the next video.